Hey there, Corey at Lilypad Marine. I want to show you how easy it is to install an underfloor mount system on, on a pontoon. We've got a, an older, I think this is a 1986 Crest 2 pontoon, uh, 24 inch on center cross member spacing. Uh, we're going to install it here on the side of the boat. Um, just show you how easy it is to put this on. We're going to deal with one cross member here that we're going to set that, actually set the, the frame of the board up here, and then the ladder plates are going to go back here. I want to go through the uh, the hardware that comes in the kit real quick. So you've got an underfloor mount plate, got the eye bolt that, that goes into the plate, we've got some machine screws that actually screw into the plate itself, and this is just to hold the plate up against the bottom of the floor. And then these are plug screws. These are, these are screws that you would put into the hole in the floor only if you've got the diving board off the boat and you want to fill that hole so it's got a nice clean surface on the floor. One other thing that I tell people is when you when you first get the uh, the mount kit, you want to put the mount plates on and make sure they spin real freely on these on these eye bolts. So double check that before you install parts. Okay, so the first step you want to do when you're when you're trying to figure out where you want to put this the undermount kit, and, and keep in mind this is applicable to pretty much any pontoon with larger cross member spacing. And when I say larger cross member spacing, I mean like 16 inch on center and larger. And, and a lot of times where I'll use an undermount kit is anywhere from a side door on forward, because that's where you're gonna find your cross member spacing is larger. If you're on the back of a boat, an older two twin boat like this, or even just a two twin boat with a low horsepower rating and the cross members are spaced enough, you can use it there also. Otherwise, if it's a, if it's a bigger boat and it's got uh, triples, it's got a lot of metal underneath, then we go with the surface mount, and, and we see a lot of those surface mount installs on the aft decks of boats. So the first thing I look for on this boat, and it's pretty easy to see on this one, you can see where the cross members are laid out because of these bolts. But what I do is I check underneath here, and there's a cross member right here. So I use a, a little square, and I lay it up against the cross member. I, I put a mark here, and then I go on the other side of the cross member, put another mark here. And then I take my, temp, my tape measure, and because I'm working around a wall, if I was working at a side gate, it would be a different story. I could just transition it right in. But because of the wall, I transfer my measurements to the inside here. And so once I get to the inside of the boat, then what I do is bring the measurements back, and I lay it out on the floor with some tape. I always like to use the painter's tape because it comes off real easy and clean. It doesn't leave any residue. The whole point of this is you want to try to make sure that you've got a cross member that you can put the mainframe plate on one side and one of the ladder plates on the other side. So we could, if we, the, the board is going to be over here. So if we wanted to, we could transition it over here so we could put the plate there and the other plate there. So we would have it where this side is supported. But in this case, we're trying to keep it close to the door so it'll be spaced like this. Now these plates, they're designed to have up to two and three quarter inch spacing between the two if they're mounted this way. This cross member just happens to be two and three quarter inches. So it's a pretty tight fit. Most cross members are two inch width, gives a little bit more leeway. So what we'll do is we'll lay it all out here, get the board in place, make sure we know exactly how it's mounted up and we'll start drilling some holes. Okay, so the next step, you wanna take your diving board and, and pull the two pins that are in the main frame and slide the ladder into the frame Put the pins back in and then you can set the board up onto the boat. And whenever we go over a sidewall like this, you want to make sure that this board is hanging totally flat against the outside of the board, of the wall. There's some silicone buttons that come in the kit. These are stick-ons. You just you basically stick these onto the back side of the diving board where it's going to touch the wall. That keeps the metal to metal contact where you don't you don't get any scratching going on the side of the boat. So once you get the board set in place like this, it's always great to have an assistant. And this is Lily with Lilypad Marine. So there is there is a little bit behind the name there. But um, it's nice to have it where you someone can hold it for you and it doesn't move around so you can really make sure it's nice and secure before you start drilling holes in the boat. So we've got the frame sitting up against the, or the board up against the wall. And then I've got the frame, it's in a vertical position. And I use a square here. Basically I put that on the floor, make sure that that that's the, the main frame is perfectly square to the floor. Once it's perfectly square to the floor and I've got my plates lined up with the holes based off of the, t the tape on the floor. 
So now I know I've got this plate is on, on the perfect spacing on this side of the cross member, and this plate is perfect spacing on that side of the cross member. So once we got these in place like this, take a half inch drill and make sure once everything is clear underneath, you wanna take a half inch drill, make sure it's a nice clean sharp drill bit if you're drilling through the floor, especially this woven floor, it just cuts right through nice and easy. Okay, so now we're going to remove the board, lay the plates in the floor, and finish making this install. Okay, so now that I've got the three holes drilled, what I like to do is, if you've got a little flooring left like this, just use a, a, a really sharp knife or a razor blade and just clean the holes up with it. You just chase it around on the inside with, it, with the blade up against the plywood, and you can, you can trim this stuff and it won't fray. It works really, really well. So now you can get a nice clean hole and then basically you just take your plates and you install the, the rivet nut pointing down into the plate or into the hole. Get it nice and square to the floor and you can see we've got spacing on both sides of the cross member here. Then I've got a 5 30 seconds bit. You just want to drill a pilot hole. Be careful not to touch the threads of the, of the plate. You don't want to tear those out. Then you want to change the, the drill bit out to, you can do a quarter inch size if you're if you're confident that the hole is lined up well, you can do a quarter inch size or you can step it up just a little bit. The biggest thing is you want to make it to where it's not too big so that the head of the screw goes down into the hole. So now we'll install these plates on the bottom side of the floor and wrap it up. Okay, I'm going to show you three different ways to install these plates. Um, what I've got here is a just a basic aluminum yardstick and drill a, a 5 8 hole in the end. Actually, I think this was a half inch hole, a little bit oversized. And the plate actually fits in that hole just perfect. So you can tip it and the plate's not going to come out unless, of course, you tip it all the way over. But the nice thing about using a yardstick like this is you can lay it on the floor and line it up with the hole and you can tell exactly how far from the rub rail that hole is going to be. And in, in this one, in this case, it's actually right around 21 and a half inches on the graduation mark. So what I do, and, and this is primarily when, when you got a boat that's got a skin on the bottom side of it, whether it's a twin or a triple, if it's got a skin, you don't want to be able to get underneath that skin to access the plate. This is the process that you would use. So we'll install this plate using this process and then I'll show you two other ways. It always does help when you've got an assistant like this that you can uh, have run the, uh, run the screws. And what you do is you just thread that eye bolt right into the hole And you want to tighten it up until it's almost touching the floor. You don't want to snug it up yet. But nice and snug, pull up on that a little bit, Lily. Okay, so now we know that that's nice and snug. So I can slide my yardstick out. Okay, so we've got the plate under the floor. We've got the eye bolt installed. Now we're just going to make sure that those little screws are lined, or the screw holes are lined up. So what I do is I use the, uh, I use the pilot drill bit that I used. And, and I run that down in the hole here. And you can tap on the plate and rotate the hole or rotate the eye bolt until you get that plate lined up. Once you get that plate lined up, make sure it's, and you can tell that it's, it's in there, it's wobbling the plate around. 
Now you want to tighten that, that eye bolt up a little bit more. Make sure it's still nice and centered in that hole. And then you can take one of these screws and don't run it all the way down yet. Then take the drill bit, go on the other side, get that hole lined up. Take your second screw. Okay, now that I've got that in like that, I like to tighten this eye bolt up so it really brings it tight to the floor. Pull that plate up tight to the floor. Because we don't want to use these screws to draw that up. If there's a piece of wood under there or something, you want to make sure that it's, it's not using these screws. Because all these screws are going to do is hold that plate in place. So we'll run that screw down so it's flush with the floor. Run that screw down so it's flush with the floor. Now you can take the eye bolt out. Okay, so now we're gonna do the other plate and we'll show you another way of doing one of these. Okay, so we're gonna put the second plate under the other side. Um, we're gonna use a, uh, my assistant. And when you got a boat that doesn't have a skin on it, it's really easy to just send someone underneath there with the plate and they can put it right on the bottom side of the bolt so that you can thread the eye bolt in and thread the screws in and uh, it's, it's a pretty straightforward process. So Lily's going to go put the plate under the boat. It's in. Okay, so the third hole I'm going to show you, we're actually just going to slide it in from the outside of the boat. And again, if this was a side gate, it would be easy for me to do it by myself, but uh, we've got a fence in the way, so I'm going to have my assistant Lily do it for you. We're just going to slide it into the hole, and once the plate's in that far, I'm going to put the eye bolt in, and back to you just a little bit, right there. So again, we'll just draw the eye bolt down where it's nice and close to the floor and then use my little drill bit here to line it up with the, the holes. Get that hole lined up. And don't don't draw it all the way to the floor. Make sure that hole's lined up, then tighten the eye bolt up. And with this woven flooring, when you draw it down, if it twists the flooring a little bit, take it past where you want it to be and then just back it up real slightly and that straightens the flooring right back out. Just like that. Now we can install the diving board. Okay, so I just wanted to go over these plug screws one more time. And these, these are really... They're basically just to fill the hole in the floor. So if you don't use the, if you're not using the diving board, you can run these into the into the floor. 
and square it up and then you got a nice clean smooth fresh flat surface so you don't have anything that that's ugly as far as the hole is concerned and you got nothing to step on or trip on so but only use these when you're just filling the holes in the floor Okay, so I've taken the board apart and I've got just the frame up here now just to show you on how, it, how easy it is to put it together. But one eye bowl in the bottom of the frame here. And I usually tip the board back to tighten up the frame. So now it's nice and snug and it's gonna hold it in that position. Then you can slide the ladder plates or the ladder into the holes, install the two pins, and now your ladder plates, you may have to move it forward or backward depending on what kept that, that frame vertical, and install your eye bolts. Okay, the last thing you need to do is install your stabilizer handle and, and I just want to stress how important it is to have the stabilizer in the upper position when your kids are jumping off of it or anybody's jumping off of it. This is really a safety feature. So when you go to put this in for the first time, it's going to go in really tight. And once you get that down to where it actually mates to the bottom surface, you want to push it and pull it to really seat the profile of this stabilizer into these little plastic inserts that are in here. Once you get those seated really well, it's still gonna slide pretty tight, but it'll eventually slide just smooth as can be. And then you wanna put this pin in your lower position is gonna be for, for the bigger kids, and then this second position here is gonna be for the littler ones, so it's a little bit lower. So now this board's ready to use.